for a woman who would like to preserve her uterus either for future childbearing purposes or just for the sake of not having a hysterectomy and has uterine fibroids, then the, uh, a myomectomy, uh, which is the formal name for removal of the fibroid, but leaving the, ur the uterus could be performed. The fibroids that we see in women occur in about 25 to 35 percent of women at some point in their lifetime. Certain genetic traits uh, play some factor in that in certain uh, races have a higher instance than others do. But fibroids are very, very common and are probably the number one cause of, of abnormal uterine bleeding and gynecological problems that lead to some type of surgical intervention. So for a woman who is looking to preserve her uterus, yes, the myomectomy becomes one of the options instead of the hysterectomy. The da Vinci myomectomy, uh, the beauty of the da Vinci again is that once again the optics are much superior to conventional laparoscopy being that they are three-dimensional so the depth perception is there and then the da Vinci allows the uh, articulation of the the arms that we put in to do the surgery is patterned after the human wrist so it's like having the hands in the pelvis and when you're doing a myomectomy and at times multiple myomectomies where you're taking off several fibroids having the ability to uh, get around the corners of the fibroid and the so-called nooks and crannies of the uterus uh, is very helpful to making the surgery far easier to do and thereby um, less blood loss associated with it as compared to uh, conventional approaches as well as uh, open uh, lapar laparotomies that are done for the uh, for fibroids as well and much faster recovery as compared, I think, to any other way of doing it. So the da Vinci lends itself very nicely to doing myomectomies as well as hysterectomies. Um, fibroids become more common as women age. They can occur at almost any age, but we see most of them in women that are in their 30s and 40s uh, particularly, but we see some even in uh, teenagers or the 20s uh, during the prime reproductive years, and that's where the myomectomies are more commonly employed um, because they're in the childbearing years. Um, certain races tend to have um, a higher incidence. Um, the African American race um, has a much higher incidence of fibroids than what the uh, Caucasian race does. So uh, it, it, is, it does vary across, a little bit across the, um, across the genetics, but for the most part they occur at almost any age, but primarily in the 40s, 30s and 40s and then they tend to shrink after menopause in the 50s and become less problematic after the 50s. The most common symptom is abnormal bleeding, either heavy menses or bleeding erratically along with heavy menses. But as the fibroids get larger, they start to become a space-occupying problem. In other words, they start to push everything else away in the pelvis, and so they start to push on the bladder, leading to women complaining that they don't hold as much urine, they have to urinate more often, they start to have problems with their bowels, a lot of lower belly pain, um, pressure in their pelvis, low back pain, um, and just generalized uh, discomfort are the other symptoms that uh, fibroids can cause. The, in, in general, the recovery from the da Vinci robotic uh, surgery, whether it's myomectomies and particularly hysterectomies, uh, is faster than any other form of surgery that I've employed in the past uh, for, the, for these same problems that the woman's having. And in general, almost everybody, well, essentially everybody does go home in less than 24 hours. Um, some patients, maybe 5% of patients, 5 to 10% will go home the same day, uh, even after major surgery. Probably with the myomectomies, most of those would go home the same day. The hysterectomies, the majority stay overnight, but they do go home in less than 24 hours. In the past, with more traditional surgery, they, that would be three or two to four days in the hospital um, versus the 20, less than 24 hours. And then I usually tell them that they'll need two weeks or less time off from work or their normal activities. And that compares to six at times eight weeks for women who have the more traditional laparotomy approaches to their, to their surgery. So it is far, a far more rapid um, recovery than the conventional surgery and much less pain. Uh, most patients go home on just ibuprofen and Tylenol and maybe a few narcotic pills, but uh, most of the time very little discomfort and rapid return to normal activities.